Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Loki Season 2 ended with Loki finally ascending to his throne as a capital G God of Stories, a bittersweet ending in which he sits alone at the heart of his own handspun loom in the middle of an Idrisil-inspired time tree, much like the Tesseract did at the heart of an Idrisil tree in that Tonsberg church in the first Captain America film. So Loki has essentially come full circle with his glorious purpose from the 2012 Avengers film and episode one of this series by becoming a kind of Infinity Stone himself, either the Space Stone of the Tesseract or the Time Stone, given the green color tones in his role as the Lord of all time, always. But is Loki stuck here forever? Does reality in the MCU always require someone to be in this chair? And is this just the burden some god figure must carry? Or are looms and trees just temporary stopgaps to another shape that the multiverse can take someday? Is the point of the multiverse saga to be a rescue mission for Loki? Let us break down everything we know about the ending of the series because the show's producers have been dropping some interesting clarifications clarifications about how we are really meant to see this finale. By the way, there are still some seats left for our upcoming live show in Los Angeles on Thursday. This show is going to be crazy. We have some special guests. We got fun bits and stunts that we have never been able to do on YouTube. And yeah, we're going to have a big confession for me over my big, reachy, stupid theories from Loki this season. Okay, I pointed out in my breakdown of the episode what Loki's final words to Sylvie and Mobius really mean. I know what I want. I know what kind of god I need to be. For you, for all of us. Yes, it's meant to be a callback to what Loki shouted at Odin all the way back in the first Thor film in 2011. I could have done it! For you! For all of us! No, Loki. Co-director Justin Benson actually told Deadline that the other co-director, Aaron Moorhead, told Tom Hiddleston to prepare by watching all of his scenes as Loki since that 2011 Thor movie. And you totally see that in Tom Hiddleston's performance throughout this episode. This line was spoken to Odin as much as it was to Sylvie and to Mobius. It was kind of a prayer to his Allfather to give him his strength to step up into a god status and to bear the burden as much as Odin has had to bear a burden. Looking back throughout the series, Loki has never truly left his Asgardian roots. Episode one showed him getting emotional upon seeing the deaths of Frigga and Odin, knowing he'd never have a chance to prove to them what he was actually capable of. Season 1, Episode 4 reunited him with Lady Sif. Season 2, Episode 3 put him in front of the Norse mythological figures of Odin and Thor and Baldur the Brave, telling Loki that no one would ever write stories about him. Even the song he sang in the Asgardian language in Season 1, Episode 3 has lyrics referring to walking over glaciers to the apple orchard, which is kind of what he does on his long walk in the finale episode, walking over this kind of glacier and creating what is essentially an apple Apple tree that bears the fruit of endless opportunities for the multiverse as it was when it was at its most chaotic, just letting it be itself and treating those incursions as fruit. Odin had always chastised Loki over only ever wanting a throne, and now in this episode Loki acquires his throne, but not the fancy throne that Odin sits upon in Asgard, but a more elemental throne. Head writer Eric Martin said in that Deadline article, quote, the idea was always Loki would finally get his throne when it was the last thing he wanted, and like Atlas, he's burdened with this purpose, and his purpose is holding all of time together. He has replaced the He's become so powerful that he alone can hold time together. Martin also echoed this idea to Esquire, saying, The big idea was taking Loki from a lowercase g god to a capital G god, powering him up to that place where he gets his throne, but it's not a throne he wants anymore. This is a duty. He's doing this so that everyone can have their lives. He's giving up the thing that he wants most so that everyone else can have their free will. We wanted to power up his abilities, but also his wisdom and knowledge. Esquire asked if we are meant to understand that he's suffering. And Eric Martin says, I'd leave that up to interpret interpretation, that final image is meant to be ambiguous. So I'll let people make up their own minds there. If you look into mythology, someone like Atlas is an interesting person to look at with that. Atlas was the Greek mythological Titan. Titan, not God. He was a Titan who was condemned to hold the heavens for eternity after the Titans lost their war against the Olympians. It's kind of a recurring thing with Titans. The Titan of Prometheus stole fire from the gods and was also chained to a rock and tortured for all eternity. It's a tortured position, but Atlas is also a figure who comes up in the myths of the exploits of Hercules. No, I'm not talking about Hercules in the MCU. I'm talking about the Greek mythological Hercules. But hey, maybe Roy Kent is going to end up talking to Loki at some point. So by referencing Atlas, this is a Titan who is not a god necessarily, but someone who shoulders a tortuous burden, who is condemned. But also, it's kind of a point of pride. So does this mean we're never going to see Loki again? Well, Tom Hiddleston told comicbook.com's Brandon Davis in the Phase Zero podcast that he wouldn't rule out a return for the character. It's so hard because, like... I'll be completely honest with you, Brandon. I have at least twice in my life said goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, and there's, you know, I've like written to Kevin Feige and Luis D'Esposito 
and Victoria Alonso be like, thank you so much. It's been like the role, you know, the role of a lifetime. And they've written notes back saying, come and see us anytime. You're always part of the family. We're always here. You know, you've given us so much and tears have been shared. So I, I think I'd be unwise at this point to be conclusive about any of it. <laughs> Our merch inspired by Loki season two keeps branching out from the sacred timeline, my friends. We got shirts inspired by Miss Minutes and our favorite repairs and advancements employee, Obi. We've got a gorgeous Mobius jet ski design that makes you wish you could get pruned away to wherever those guys are at. If you order the TVA handbook shirt, I can't be promised it will be dropped into your open window like Renslayer at Victor Timely's workshop. That's completely up to your relationship with your local delivery driver. And if you want to snag a Marvel Tea. We've got you covered there too, all my flirkins out there. Grabbing a tea from Nerd Riot is a great way to support new rock stars. To get some Loki merch of your very own, either click the link in the description or head on over to nerdriot.shop. So from his throne, Loki is able to hear everything that happens in the multiverse as Mobius' words of let time pass echo through the vines. We get the sense that he's at peace, but yes, like Atlas, he also looks like he is pretty pained that he's shouldering the burden on behalf of his friends. So one way to look at Loki's current status is he is in hell, which reminds us of his words when he woke up in the void in season one, episode four post credit scene. Is this hell with one L referring to the Norse mythological afterlife where people are punished? Loki has always expected to die and wake up in a kind of mythological torment. For those of us who have fallen in love with a character, let's not forget that this was the guy who left the sacred timeline immediately following 2012's Avengers, where he killed scores of people and wanted to kill and subjugate even more. He is a redemptive figure, but he is a sinner. But if you look at a character who's trapped in hell, the classic Greek mythological story beat is the story of Orpheus in Eurydice, when Orpheus went down to the underworld to rescue his love. So I think Loki is destined to be rescued from this, but not right away. I just think it would be too great of a punishment for Marvel fans to bear to suggest that every MCU title going forward forward exists in a reality shouldered like Atlas by Tom Hiddleston, a weeping Keebler elf in a tree waiting for us to whisper meaningful phrases so that they can trickle down to the roots. Water doesn't trickle down to the roots, you know roots, but you know what I mean. Yes, it's a fitting symbolic end for Loki, but it's a more climactic full circle journey for characters like Thor and for the other Avengers and for Loki's friends left over in the Loki series to have to rescue the god of mischief that they once fought and for the Avengers, the god that they once beat up and arrested in the Battle of New York. But again, not right away, because Loki maintains his Yggdrasil time tree because it's the only alternative to a cruel loom that would be overseen by a Kang variant. So as we continue forward in the multiverse saga, the true stakes of defeating the Kang dynasty or any other multiversal villain who could take their place is that this is the only way to alleviate the burden currently placed on Loki. So long as the Kangs exist, Loki will never leave this post. So through the events of the Fantastic Four and Avengers 5 and Avengers Secret Wars, the Marvel heroes will not only have to defeat the full Kang dynasty, they will have to figure out a way to create another infrastructure for multiversal timeline management. Perhaps infinite trees in a true orchard that can check and balance each other organically with minimal upkeep maintained by a mere council of reeds or the TVA. So I think Loki will return to the MCU, but we should admit that the main narrative arc of his life is over. And you know what? We owe him a round of applause because he has been the most interesting thing and maybe to some the only interesting thing to come out of the current era of Marvel. He has been single handedly shouldering everyone's interest in this franchise. Debatably, debatably. But I think Loki's function going forward into the MCU, if he could ever leave his post, should be as a kind of mentor or a guide or just an archetypal scapegoat, the way Christ has been, a religious figure who made an ultimate sacrifice, and in the way that everyone fought for Coulson in the 2012 Avengers, I think everyone should fight for Loki in Secret Wars. In other recent videos, I've speculated that the battle lines of Secret Wars will come down to multiverse versus no multiverse, chaos versus way too much order. So there's gonna be Marvel figures who fight on Team Loki, and yeah, I really hope it includes some of the ones from the Battle of New York who fought against him in that film. Thor, Hulk, Tony, Steve, Natasha, Clint, Fury, and Coulson. Imagine Coulson whispering to God Loki, you found conviction. Imagine Thor leading a charge like Aragorn in Return of the King and whispering, for Loki. The MCU just needs to reunite these two brothers in which the sun shines on them once again. So Avengers, assemble, win the multiversal war, let the multiverse thrive on its own without needing an atlas and save your God. Hey, support us with an OB inspired we're all gonna die shirt at nerdriot.shop or a Loki God of Stories shirt to pay some respect to your God. Follow me on all social platforms at EA Boss. Subscribe to all three channels of the New Rockstars Network. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, bye.